أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبيين والمرسلين محمد بن عبد الله صل اللهم عليه وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين ومن استنى سنته مهتدى بهديهم وتبعهم بخير وإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Continuing the tafsir of Surah Al-Hadid, ayah number 25, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنْزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانَ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطِ وَأَنْزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدَ فِيهِ بَأْسٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ وَلِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَنْصُرُهُ وَرُسُلَهُ بِالْغَيْبِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ We have sent our messengers with the proofs. Al-bayyinat is the plural of bayyinah. Bayyinah is a proof or clearance. Some, something to clear uh, to, to people what they should understand, to clarify. And uh, also it can mean to prove something. So this bayyinat here are, is, is referring, the word is referring to the miracles. Al-Mu'jizat, that those people, they are really, for, 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 uh, for real, they are messengers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because every one who is uh, a messenger of Allah or a prophet from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, carrying a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to people, having this authority from Allah to give the message to people has to prove that. Otherwise, anyone can come and say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me to you. And there are many false prophets and messengers, and there are many people who claim that they are getting some inspiration or angels come to them, and they are all liars. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to the messengers and prophets uh, miracles with them to prove to people that they are uh, sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لقد أرسلنا رسولنا بالبينات the miracles وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان and we gave them أنزلنا أنزل to bring something from up to down this is these things are sent from Allah سبحانه وتعالى to the messengers two things الكتاب والميزان first الكتاب second الميزان Al-Kitab is the book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is something for the messengers, not for the prophets. The, pro the messengers, each messenger has the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give da'wah to people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and a scripture, a book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Al-Tawrah, Al-Injil, Al-Zabur, Al-Suhuf, Al-Quran. Uh, so Al-Kitab, it, it means the book. And the book here refers to all, is referring to all the books that has been sent with the messengers. And Al-Mizan. Al-Mizan, it means the balance. Al-Mizan. Al-Mizan al is the balance. And here it refers to justice. Justice, fairness. The uh, constitution and the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to implement justice. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give the book, for example, for the Quran, did not give this book to people individually, or did not just bring the book as it is to, uh, to, to be read by people like this. No, he gave this book to a person, a person who can teach this book to people and teach them how to understand what is in this book and how to implement the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what to do and what not to do in this book. So here there is a proof that the kitab, is, the kitab only is not enough, but both the kitab and how to apply the kitab to implement justice. And this is one uh, very important argument to respond to those people who are not Muslims, but they, they, they claim to be Muslims, they say, we believe only in the Quran, nothing else. Don't tell me Sunnah, because Quran is the word of Allah, but Sunnah is the word of a human. So I cannot 
make equality between this and that. So I take only what is from Allah, but not, I, I don't take from the human. And who brought to you this book that is from Allah? It is that human. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trusts that human to give you this book and you trust that this human told you the truth, that these verses are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have to trust what this human is teaching you about what is in this book and about what to do and what not to do. If you are not trusting him, then you shouldn't have taken this book from him anyway, because this book did not come to you directly, but it came through him. So the book and Al-Kitab and Al-Mizan. Al-Kitab and Al-Mizan. And uh, this, th this is also giving us uh, uh, a clear uh, interpretation why Islam, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought Islam to people? What is the target of Islam? What is the target of Islam? It is justice. The target is justice. Uh, the target is not peace. The target is not mercy. The target is not integration. All of these are good meanings and they are affiliated with the main target that is justice. Mercy is there. Peace is there. But they are not the root. They are not the main target. The main target is justice, haqq. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say al-kitab wa rahma or al-kitab wa salam because in Islam there is sometimes uh, uh, mercy and there is sometimes punishment. There are some severe punishments. There, er, there is execution. There is a beating. There is cutting hand of the, of the ones who steal. And also in Islam there are Peace, there is peace and there is war and there is jihad fi sabidillah. So peace when uh, uh, in, in the places of peace, in the, in, in the situations of peace and war in the situations of war. Mercy in the situations of mercy and uh, 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 punishment in the situations of punishment. But everything falls under justice whether there is mercy or there is punishment, whether there is peace or there is war, all has to be bounded within justice. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al-Kitab wal mizan So it is very important for Muslims to understand that. The target is not these meanings. The target is justice. The target is justice. This is what will help you to understand the Quran as a whole and not to be like Christians who come to the church, the priests, they read some parts of the gospel, some parts of the Old Testament, and they leave other parts. They read the parts which talks, talk about uh, peace, talks about uh, mercy, talks about how to be nice, how to be uh, uh, understanding. And there are many other parts that talk about killing, talk about murdering even children. And this cannot be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some Muslims start doing like those. Mention in, in, in uh, Khubbat al-Jum'ah or the lectures or especially when they uh, meet with the non-Muslims, they mention only uh, the, the verses about mercy, about rahma, about peace, and they don't say anything about jihad, uh, about qital, about uh, how, how, how to be a strong Muslim, about the Muslim state, because they don't want anyone to say about them that they are terrorists or they are, they are, they are ISIS. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the people of the, of the book, do you want to believe in parts of the book and disbelieve in others? Whoever does that, believe in some parts of the book and leave the others, ignore the others, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them khizyan fil hayat dunya humiliation in this life, they will never get the target that they want. Those people that they are trying to please, they will not be pleased. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And in the Day of Judgment, يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ أَشَدِّ الْعَذَابِ Those will be having the most severe punishment يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ because they, they have hidden what they know. They know that these verses are there, but they don't want to talk about them. They don't want to tell people about them. They just tell people what they want to hear. And they hide the others. So for you to be a Muslim who understands the whole Quran and to feel peace in your heart that you understand and accept the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to know that the target of this deen is justice. And other things, they are put in the right uh, context. Mercy in the context of mercy, not in every context. Uh, peace is the context of peace, in the context of peace, not in every context, but justice in all contexts, always there is justice. وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ And we give them both uh, الْكِتَاب and الْمِيزَانِ, the book and the balance. لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطِ So that people implement justice. Al-Qist is also another interpretation of justice. Al-Qist is justice. وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدِ And we brought Al-Hadid. Al-Hadid is iron. Al-Hadid is iron. And this is the name of the surah. Surah Al-Hadid. فِيهِ بَأْسٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ This is one of the things that proves that this Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say وَأَخْرَجْنَا الْحَدِيدِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say we brought iron from earth. But وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدِ It came from the sky. Iron came, came from the sky. And this is what the, geolog the, the, the geologist has proven uh, many years ago, that iron was not one of the essential materials of earth when the earth was... Uh, 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 it is still in, in, in the composition period when we did not have the earth shield and the earth was liquid, uh, a lot of lava, the, the uh, hadith, the, the, the iron, uh, iron was not part of the material. But where did iron come from? It came from shooting stars, shooting stars that came to the earth and then it, it was collected on earth from many shooting stars that came from different stars and other uh, uh, solar systems. So iron was not originally from earth. It came from outside. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدِ And we brought al-hadid from the sky to earth. فِيهِ بَأْسٌ شَدِيدٌ there is a, 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 a very, uh, a very strong, uh, it, it, it's, it's a very strong material. Ba'sun, uh, strength, shadid, very, very strong material. And this is how we see uh, nowadays, and everyone knows this for a long time, weapons are made of, of iron, uh, uh, any types of machines or vehicles that uh, 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 that required to be hard hard and, and and tough are made of iron and there is uh, different types of iron uh, and th there is uh, steel and there are other types there are other types of material that are, are very strong but they are not as strong as steel for ex for example there is uh, titanium uh, the, the 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 metal that uh, uh, they make the, uh, some aircrafts, uh, ultrasonic air aircrafts, they make them from titanium. And uh, they were thinking before that titanium is as hard as steel. Why do they make aircrafts from titanium? Because titanium is very light, very light type of metal. And they were thinking that it is as hard as steel, but they discovered that it is, it is not like this because when they tried in some aircrafts to mix some parts 
to make some parts of the aircraft from steel and some parts of titanium, then when the, when the aircraft was going, uh, passing the, 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 uh, the, the, the speed of sound ultrasonic, what happened is that those parts of titanium that were touching the steel, they crushed. They crushed like powder. So they understood that they cannot mix steel with titanium because then steel will destroy titanium. So steel that is iron is, the, the, is stronger than any other uh, metal. وأنزلنا الحديدة فيه بأس شديد ومنافع للناس. And uh, it's a very uh, useful material, منافع. It has a lot of uses, a lot of usefulness to people. وليعلم الله من ينصره ورسله بالغيب إن الله قوي عزيز. And for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know who would support Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala man yansuruhu who would support the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger bil ghaybi in their hearts because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is in the hearts of people when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for Allah to know who supports Allah this does not mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs our support but how to support the deen of Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided before the creation of earth, what is going to happen until the day of judgment. Everything is decided. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that at the end, this earth will be controlled by the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we have said in the Zabur, the book that has been given to Dawood alayhi salam, David alayhi salam, that the earth will go back to the good believers. So this is decided. And we know how this will happen when al, 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 the, the, the last Khalifa al-Mahdi will come and Isa alayhi salam, Prophet Jesus السلام, will come again from, from heaven to earth and will act as the Khalifa of Muslims and will judge based on the ruling of Islam because his book, the Gospel Al Injil, was before Al Quran and Quran is the last book. So Isa, السلام, as we said before, he will come to earth. And will and will judge with Quran, the last book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will break all the crosses, will destroy all churches and break all crosses, because he is the one that they claim that they make this cross because of uh, his death or his sacrifice, which is a lie. So he himself will destroy all things that present this lie and will judge with Islam, which is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the deen of all prophets. This will happen before the end of times. This will happen before Yawm al qiyamah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this, and this will happen anyway, with us or without us, in our time or sometime after us. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us is to do our best to support this deen, to tell people about the haqq, about, the, the, about this deen, to invite them to Islam, because our job is to save those people, not to follow the wrong belief or the wrong beliefs, and not to be cheated by the shaitan, because we want to save them from Jahannam. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And this is how we support Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or support the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the time of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those who lived with, with the messengers, they faced a lot of difficulties with the messengers. The Muslims at the time of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they have been tortured, killed, uh, discriminated against, faced a lot of problems and starvation and poverty, and they have some of them left their, 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 
a very rich life and wealthy life and to live a very poor and, and difficult life only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the time of Isa alayhi salam, the disciples of Isa alayhi salam and, and his students, they faced a lot of discrimination and a lot of killing or torturing uh, the, 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 the crucifixion that uh, people know or the, think that Isa alayhi salam was crucified. The cross is a killing machine. How many people were crucified? Thousands of people. Thousands of people were crucified by, by the Romans and by many others just to leave the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After, uh, after the, uh, the, the, this, uh, the, the, the person whose name is Paul, who is a liar, who invented the Christianity of today claiming that Isa alayhi salam is a son of God or he is God. This was invented by a Jew called Paul. And after he invented this, he was in alliance with the Romans. And uh, they, to, uh, af after they accepted this deen and forced everyone to follow this in the big meeting in, 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 in Rome, then for those who didn't want to follow this new religion that is not from Allah, and they still said that Jesus is not son of God, he's the messenger of God. They crucified thousands of them and they burned thousands of them and they tortured thousands of them. So those people who, are, uh, who lived with the prophets or lived in the times after the prophets, they were the ones who suffered the most. They were the ones who suffered the most and they are the ones who will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most. The, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know what everyone does and what everyone has in his or her heart. So if you claim that you are supporting the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in your heart you are just hypocrite, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know that. So it's not only what you do, but your intention. What is your intention? Is it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or for people to say, ah, oh, mashallah, this is a very religious person. Inna Allah qawiyun aziz. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most strong qawi and the most glorious al-aziz. Inna Allah qawiyun aziz. So, this is important to know that book, the book and the balance. And this is very important to, 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 to teach our children. And what is very dangerous, what is very dangerous when there is a person who is a new Muslim, there are many new Muslims that I see and subhanAllah, I see, I, I, I feel very sad for them because the ones who told them about Islam, they did not they were not honest with them. They just told them what the society like. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not ours. It's not ours. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. We cannot be like judges to say, this part of Islam, we tell people. And that part of Islam, we don't tell people. This, in this way, we will be munafiqeen. So, when we give the new Muslim the Quran, this is the Quran, read it. Then what did you tell this new Muslim to become a Muslim? What did you tell? Did you tell everything about Islam? Or you told only the sweet things, the nice things. When we say sweet and nice, you mean, we mean sweet and nice in the eyes of the society. Because everything in Islam is good. But because... Uh, we, we, we are living in a specific society with a specific culture. Some things in Islam might look bad to people because of their background, because of the media. So some Muslims, when they invite people to Islam, they hide these things. And then the person converts to Islam. And then the person, when, when, when he or she gets the Quran that you will give to them, start reading, find some things about jihad, about fighting, about what is this thing? You didn't tell me about these things. Why didn't you tell me? Because he was not honest with you. There are 
some things, some parts of Islam where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to fight. When, some, when, when we are attacked, we cannot run away like cowards. We have to fight. And sometimes we have to kill. When people are attacking us, we have to kill them. We have to fight them. And this is justice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the, the main thing about Islam is justice. Mercy with is, 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 is an overall meaning, and this is the mainstream of Islam. And peace also is a mainstream of Islam when we deal with people. But being peaceful doesn't mean that you are coward. So Muslims are told in many situations to carry the weapons and to fight. And if they die in this, in, in, in this path, they will be shaheed, they will be murders. Some people, of course, they go very extreme and they kill innocents. And this is haram. This is not part of Islam. But not to carry weapons at all and not to fight at all and just wait for people to shoot us. No, this is not Islam also. So we have to give the message as it is. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message, not our message. We have to be honest with people and tell them everything about Islam as it is. We have to be honest and give the message as it is. And, it, and then it is up to them. We are not trying to collect customers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ You don't guide those whom you like. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides who, who will be guided. So we, our job is to present. And then whether people accept or not, it's up to them. And we don't feel very sad when people don't accept. We feel sad only if we did not do our job giving the message as it is. Uh, ayah number 26. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا وَإِبْرَاهِيمٌ وَجَعَلْنَا فِي ذُرِّيَّتِهِمَا النُّبُوَّةَ وَالْكِتَابَ فَمِنْهُمْ مُهْتَدٍ وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ And we have sent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he say, we, we in Arabic, it is not, it doesn't mean that there are many. It can mean that there are many, but it can mean that someone is talking about himself with glory. So that the kings and the, the, the the leaders, <coughs> uh, when they speak Arabic, they used to say we. So it is one, one thing, one, one property of the Arabic language because uh, some, some non-Muslims, they say, you see in the Quran, <coughs> God is saying we. So in the Quran, it is a proof of Trinity. And this has nothing to do with Trinity. Is it, it, it is just a way of speaking for someone to say, that he's glorious. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا We have sent <coughs> Nuhan wa Ibrahim. Nuh, the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, and the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. وَجَعَلْنَا فِي ذُرِّيَّتِهِمَا النُّبُوَّةَ وَالْكِتَابِ And we make prophethood in their uh, uh, successors. فِي ذُرِّيَّتِهِمَا in their successors. And Nubuwata, prophethood, wal kitab, and the holy books. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us after Nuh alayhi salam, all other prophets, they were from the successors of Nuh, from the children of Nuh. And after Ibrahim alayhi salam, all the, the prophets who had books, they were also from the children and grandchildren and grand grandchildren of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the successors of Ibrahim alayhi salam. فَمِنْهُمْ مُهْتَدٍ وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ So some of their children, successors, I mean, through generations, were guided. فَمِنْهُمْ مُهْتَدٍ وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ And a lot of them, فَاسِقُونَ They were sinners. So all the Arabs of Quraysh, the tribe of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are all the successors of 
Ibrahim alayhi salam. So they have Ibrahim alayhi salam as their ancestor. And many of them, they were kuffar, they were disbelievers, and they were the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a very important meaning in this ayah. It's not about family relation. It's not about family connection. It's about your deeds. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day he spoke to his family, Bani Hashim, and he said, Ya Safiya, Ya Ammata Rasulillah, O oh, Safiya, the aunt of Rasulullah, my aunt. إعمالي فإني لا أغني عنك من الله شيء. Do your best, do the good deeds, because يوم القيامة I will not be able to protect you from Allah. You cannot say that I I am the aunt of the Prophet, so I can do whatever I want, and then I am saved because of my family relation. And the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said again, يا فاطمة يا بنت رسول الله. O فاطمة. The daughter of the Messenger of Allah. إعمالي فإني لا أغني عنك من الله شيء. Do your best in the good deeds because I will not be able to protect you from Allah سبحانه وتعالى if you are if you do a lot of sins. And then Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said, لا يأتين الناس يوم القيامة بأعمالهم وتأتون بأنسابكم. I don't want that the other Muslim, the other Muslims Yawm al Qiyamah, they come to me with their good deeds, and you come to me with just your family relations with me. So this is a very important lesson. Those prophets, Nuh alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam, all other prophets, they were from, uh, from their children, but there were many of their children also sinners and disbelievers. And they would not be able, they will not be able to save them. Ibrahim alayhi salam, his own uncle was kafir. And uh, he could not save him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, la tahdi man ahbab. You don't guide those that you like. Allah yahdi man yasha. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who decides who's guided. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides based on who is good in the heart to be guided. So Ibrahim alayhi salam's uncle, who he, he was calling him father because he was uh, very close to him. He's the one who, who brought him up. He tried his best to convince him to be a Muslim, but he, uh, he was not convinced. And the same with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uncle, Abu Talib. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tried many times to convince him to be a Muslim. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uncle was not like Ibrahim alayhi salam's uncle. Ibrahim alayhi salam's uncle, he was working against Ibrahim. And he was very rude with him. But the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uncle, he was protecting him and he was defending him. And he was very nice to Muslims, but he did not be a Muslim because he preferred, he preferred to be loyal to his family and his traditions than to change his deen to the right path. And the Nabi وسلم, told him when he was dying, when Abu Talib was dying, the Nabi was sitting beside him. And uh, 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 Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told his people, the leaders of his people, if you say one word and you believe in this word, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will give you glory over all Arabs and you will take control of earth. And you will be glorious also in the day, in, in, in the life after. And you will be protected and glorious in the life after. He said, what is this word? He said, to say, la ilaha illallah, to say, no God but Allah. And then they said to him, you want to make all the gods one God? This is very strange. We cannot accept. And then they left the room. Then Abu Talib, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uncle, 
he was dying because they came to visit him. And he said to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, oh my nephew, I don't think you told them something wrong. There is nothing wrong with what you said, what, with what you asked them. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he hoped that his uncle will be a Muslim. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to his uncle, oh, then you, my uncle, they didn't say, then you, you say it. You say la ilaha illallah so that I can uh, uh, defend you in the day of judgment and say to my Lord that he said this before he died. Then one of them, Abu Jah, he came again to the room and said, Ya Abu Talib, are you going to leave the deen of your family now? Are you going to leave the deen of your family now? Then Abu Talib, he looked at the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, oh my nephew, if people will not say that I would say it only because I'm afraid of death, I will say it only to make you happy. I would have said it only to make you happy. So he didn't want to say it. And, if, and he said he would say it only to make the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam happy, not because he wants to say it despite the fact that he knew for sure that it was right, but he died and did not say it. He preferred to be mentioned after he died that he was loyal to his family. He was loyal to his culture and he did not leave his tradition and he's not give away his traditions to uh, follow another deen, even if it was true. And he died like this. And he uh, uh, doomed himself in this way. So this is what uh, many non-Muslims, they don't accept Islam because of. After they know for sure that Islam is from God, but they know that in order to be Muslims, they have to give up many of their traditions many of their culture. They cannot live the same way as they used to live before. And people will not look at them in the same way that they used to look at them before. They will have to face some difficulty, especially if they are living in a non-Muslim society. And even in some Muslim societies, they, which are not following Islam. So people, they know that. And they know that it is difficult. And many, there is a lot of people who believe that Islam is the truth and they don't become Muslims because they feel that they are not able to face this difficulty of going against the culture. And they forget, they forget that if they choose the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will not be alone, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support them to face these difficulties, like how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported the Muslims at the time of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to face these difficulties. They were not super men. They were very weak, very poor. One of them, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he was a very thin, very short and very thin person. And he was working as a shepherd. And he was beaten a lot by the kuffar. And when they used to beat him, on his face he used to, uh, and he falls down on the floor and they see his, his, uh, uh, his legs and they laugh a lot, look, look at his legs. It looks like uh, legs of a cat. He's very thin, look at him. Those are the Muslims of Muhammad. Those are the ones that he think he will spread his deen with, look at him. But this did not let him down. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he was one of the uh, greatest scholars of Sahaba. And he was one of those who have been uh, mostly tortured and beaten. And he, he used to, when, when there is a new surah of Quran, new verses, new surah of Quran, he, he used to volunteer to be the one uh, to say to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I will be the one who will go to the kuffar and recite for them this surah because they have to know. And he used to go and recite. And then when he started reciting the Quran, they beat him. And he is injured. 
And then he goes again and recite again. And they beat him again. And he goes and recite again. And they beat him again. So nothing could break his will. Nothing could break his will. And no one would do, would do this. I mean, for example, in Norway, no one is going to beat anyone. Or, but it's just like, there are other types of hardship which are never comparable to what the Sahaba uh, used to face. So uh, it is not by the family relation, not by the family connection, and it is by the deeds, the good deeds. There were many people from the family of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are going to hell because they were enemies of, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enemies of Islam. And there are many people who has no family relation to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to the prophets. And they are one of the best ones who will be in paradise because of their deeds. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Ayah 27, <coughs> ثم قفينا على آثارهم برسلنا وقفينا بعيسى بن مريم وآتيناه الإنجيل وجعلنا في قلوب الذين اتبعوه رأفة ورحمة ورهبانية نبت دعوها ما كتبناها عليهم إلا بتغاء رضوان الله فما رعوها حق رعايتها فآتينا الذين آمنوا منهم أجرهم وكثير منهم فاسقون ثم قفينا على آثارهم برسلنا. And then after after Nuh and Ibrahim, there were many prophets after them. وقفينا بعيسى بن مريم. وقفينا it means that he came after. عيسى بن مريم, he was the last prophet before Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the last prophet and messenger before Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, he's عيسى بن مريم عليه السلام. The son of Maryam. Jesus, the son of Mary. وآتيناه الإنجيل and we give him an Injil, the gospel. وجعلنا في قلوب الذين اتبعوه رأفة ورحمة. And his followers, his disciples, his students, they had a lot of mercy. They were very good people. They were merciful people. ورهبانية نبتدعوها. And they invented رهبانية. راهب it means monk. They invented this uh, uh, way of life, to live as a monk. We did not tell them to live as monks. They did this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was the story of that? The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the people of Israel, Bani Israel, and Israel here refers to the name of Ya'qub alayhi salam. Ya'qub alayhi salam, his name is Ya'qub and his name is also Israel. Uh, <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this name. Of course, in the, in the Old Testament, there is a, a very uh, a wrong and, and, uh, and uh, uh, ridiculous story that they say that uh, uh, this is how uh, God give Ya'qub the name of Israel. They say that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came in the form of a human to Ya'qub. And they too, they had a fight. Ya'qub and Allah had a fight. And Ya'qub beat him down. A'udhu billah. Beat, beat Allah down. And then Allah said to Ya'qub, Ya'qub, leave me, let me go. And then Ya'qub told him, Ya Allah, I will not let you go. You have to bless me and bless my people. And then he told him again, you let me go. Then he said, Ya Allah, I will not let you go. You bless me and bless my people. And he said to him a third time, you let me go. He said, no, I will not let you go before you bless me and bless my people. Then he said, okay, I bless you and bless your people, and now your name is Israel. This is a very wrong story, and it's humiliating the identity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he can come in the shape of human and fight with another human, and that other human beat him down. This, is, this, is, this shows you how 
uh, how disrespect those people who changed because this is not part of the book of Allah. This, this, this is one of the things that they put in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This shows you how disrespect, how much disrespect they have towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the people of Bani Israel after Isa alayhi salam, because Isa alayhi salam, he's from Bani Israel. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, they were divided into 72 groups, 72 groups. Many of them, because of the pressure of the other kingdoms, the Parisians and the Romans and, and the others who did not accept the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most of them, they lift the deen. They give away their deen. They give away their religion, except three except three, they decided to defend their religion and their belief. So one group, they continued making da'wah and teaching people the, the real deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was after the time of Paul, when he and the Romans tried to force people to follow this new religion uh, uh, that, that was invented by him, that Isa alayhi salam is a son of God. So there were three groups of Muslims, or what we say the true Christians, because Christians uh, should refer to Jesus Christ or the followers of the Christ. So the real Christians are Muslims because Isa alayhi salam was Muslim. So three groups of Muslims or real Christians, they decided to go on and to teach people the true belief of Isa alayhi salam. So one group, <coughs> they uh, uh, decided to go on and of course the, uh, the kings, of the Romans and others, they did not let them. So they fought them and they fought back. So they did jihad, he said, jihad was not only after Islam or an, an, an Islamic war. There are many prophets and many followers of prophets who did jihad, he said, they fought the disbelievers in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this first group, they did a lot of jihad and many of them were killed and until almost all of them were killed. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, they were patient, they were all killed, and they were saved. Saved, it does not mean that they were saved in this dunya, but they were saved in Akhirah, in the day of judgment. They are saved because they fought for their deen, they did jihad for their religion and their belief until they got killed, all of them. And then another group, they decided to fight also for their belief. And they did not accept to change their belief. But they were weaker than the first group. So they could not fight a long time. So many of them were killed and many of them were imprisoned and they put them in, in, in prisons, and they tortured them a lot. They tortured them a lot, so that they used to, to, to bring one of them, put him in a hole, dig a hole, and put this person in a hole, tightened, and they bring the shoe, and they start suing this person from his head to his toes. For him or for her to leave their belief and to follow this new belief but they did not accept. They were preferred to be sold from head to toe and not to leave their belief. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, they were tortured and they were patient and they were all killed and they were saved. Saved in the day of judgment. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala rewarded them for their sac sacrifice. They would be rewarded for their sacrifice. And then when this group also, 
was destroyed, a third group of the real believers, they decided to fight for their belief. But they could not fight because they were weak. And uh, it was very difficult for them to be imprisoned and tortured. So when they found that they will be surrounded by, by, by the others and they will be forced to convert to this, uh, uh, this belief or this new religion, they decided to go to, uh, to the mountains and to be away from those kings and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these mountains and to avoid people. And they sent messages to the kings and they told them, we will leave your land. We will leave your land. We will not come to your land. We will go to the mountains away from your borders. So we will leave you alone and you leave us alone. And then they said to them, okay, but you, do, you never come to our land. He said, we will not come to your land. We just want to worship Allah <coughs> with ourselves. We will uh, plant our own food and we will build our own houses and we will not mix with people. We will just be away. So when they found that they don't have energy to fight and they don't have energy to have clash with those kingdoms, then they said, at least we save ourselves. And save our belief. So this is how they started being monks. Because a monk is a person who lives alone and uh, avoiding mixing with people only when it is necessary. And then they invented other things after that, after some time that a monk cannot get married if he is a man or a woman. They are dedicated to the church. And this was not something that those believers had. So they were just afraid of getting killed. And this is what made them to avoid people. But no one of them said, no, I will not marry or uh, uh, a man or a woman who said, I will not get married because this is something that is a need for a human. A man needs a woman, a woman needs a man. So this was invented afterwards, afterwards. When some of these monks, after some time, they started accepting this new religion. And now the monks who are living nowadays, they are following the same false religion and putting the cross like, like regular Christians. And they have their own rules. They say, we don't marry and we, we don't do this, we don't do that. And then we hear about a lot of scandals for uh, priests or monks. Who, who, who commit adultery and commit zina, and uh, they have sexual abuse of children and of, uh, of other women in the church. So why? Because they made some laws for themselves that is beyond the human uh, uh, nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with a nature. A man needs a woman. A woman needs a man. You cannot live like that. So when they say, no, we will live like this, then they had to commit these things and they have to, uh, the, the, they cannot resist and they will do it in the dirty way. Instead of getting married, no, they will make sexual abuse. So this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَمَا رَعَوْهَا حَقَّ رِعَايَتِهَا In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, over time, they did not, they did not, or they were not able to offer what they promised to offer. They, they said, we will live alone for Allah. We will not get married for Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell them that. But, and then after they said, we will do this, we will do that, they could not. They did not fulfill their promise. They did not keep their promise that we will do this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have rewarded the believers among them, we have rewarded them 
with what they deserve. We give them what they deserve as a reward. And a lot of them, they were sinners. And here is a lesson, a very important lesson that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us. You should not ever think that you can be a better Muslim than what Allah subhanahu wa and, and do and, and offer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some things more than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you to offer. You should never think that you can be a better Muslim than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, he was a normal human. And he was living as a human. He used to, uh, to, to, to stay awake in the, uh, in the daytime and sleep in the night and eat and drink and get married and live as a normal person. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَمَا شَادَّ الدِّينَ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا غَلَبًا Anyone who tries to make it difficult for himself or herself and other people, you will not be able to continue. You will be defeated and will retreat and be even, be even worse. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, you must do this. So these are the only things that we must do. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us these are haram things, then only those things are haram. Then no one has the right to say about something that is haram, while Allah did not say that it is haram, or Rasulullah did not say it is haram. And no one has the right to tell people, you have to do this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say that you have to do this. Or Rasulullah did not say you have to do this. When you try to enforce on people some additional rules or enforce on yourself, then you will make it too difficult for people and too difficult for yourself. And they will not survive this way and you will not survive this way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a system of life. He's our creator. Give us a system of life and some rules. Do this and don't do this. And there is a balance. There is a balance. This is how you can live as a human. So don't make it too much for yourself. This is your, uh, uh, within the borders of your, uh, your ability and your energy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you and this is what you can do as a human. Of course, there are some people who are a bit weaker because they are sick or they are very weak. And there, there are, then there are special permissions for those uh, to, to uh, not, not, not to do some of the things. For example, not everyone can give zakah because not all people are rich. Some people are poor. So the ones who are poor, we don't need to give charity. We not, don't need to give zakah, but they get zakah from others. So some duties are for everyone. Some duties are for some people, not for everyone, but everything is within the balance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't disturb the balance. Don't say that, oh, this is too little. I can do more. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, uh, at the time of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, three people came to uh, the house of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They wanted to ask about his life, how he's living. So the wife of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them, he was not there himself, but his wife told them that he's fasting uh, two days a week. He's uh, praying this amount of night prayer every night. <clears throat> and the, the, she, she told him about his life, the, the way that he eats, how he spent his day. Then they said, Oh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's a messenger. Allah forgive all of his sins. But we need to do more than that. One of them, he said, I will fast every day. Every day I will fast from Fajr to Maghrib. And the other one, he said, I will pray all the night, every night, from Isha to Fajr. I will not sleep in the night. I will pray every night, all the night. And the other one, he said, 
I will not marry women. I will live alone and I will not marry women because I will dedicate my life to worshiping the same way as monks. Then in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard about those three people. Then he went to the masjid and he gave a speech to the Muslims. And he said, I hear that some people, they heard about my worshiping and they thought it is too little. I'm telling you that I'm worshiping Allah the best way that Allah can be worshiped. Allah sent me to you to show you how Allah wants you to worship. And I fast some days and I break my fast some days. And I pray in the night sometime and I sleep also in the night. And I do marry women. And if you don't follow the way that I'm telling you, then you are not true followers of Islam. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another time that you, this deen is strong. This religion is strong. If you try to uh, push it, if, uh, if, 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 you, if you know that there is a, a strong person and you say, you know, okay, I challenge you. Let's, let's try to push each other. I'll challenge you. Then this strong person is very strong. He will always beat you down. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this deen is strong. If you try to uh, fight with it or try to push it and say, no, no, you are not strong enough. Then the deen will always beat you down because you will make it difficult for yourself and you will not be able to continue the way that you thought you will continue. And this is a lesson to every Muslim. If you want to live as a Muslim, follow the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he is the one that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent us as a role model to follow in our lives. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in ayah number 28, Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu, ittaqu Allah wa aminu bi rasoolihi يؤتكم كفلين من رحمته ويجعل لكم نورا تمشون به ويغفر لكم والله غفور رحيم <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said يا أيها الذين أمن O believers اتقوا الله Fear Allah Respect Allah وآمنوا برسوله And believe in his messenger يؤتكم كفلين من رحمته He will give you two shares of his mercy Two shares of his mercy, it means two share of reward. What are the two shares? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about some people who will get double reward. Like, like whom? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said some people will get double reward. Like a person from the people of the book believed in his messenger. And when he heard about me, he believed in me also. So someone who was following the deen of Isa alayhi salam. And then when he knew that there is a new messenger and there is a new uh, book, then he believed also in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And there were many people of those who believed in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam after they were following the deen of Isa alayhi salam. Then he will get double reward. The reward of his belief, his true belief before me and his belief <coughs> after he found me. And one of those, he was Salman radiallahu anhu, the Parisian one, who, uh, uh, who was following the deen of Isa alayhi salam. And his teacher, uh, his teacher, a priest, but a true priest, priest, a Muslim priest. So there were Muslim priests. <clears throat> uh, he, Salman alayhi salam, he stayed with him, learning from him many years. And then when he was about to die, the teacher, Salman told him, now you are my teacher. Can you tell me about any other teacher, any other priest, priest who is still Muslim? Because at that, at that time, almost all priests, they were just following this new religion of cross and trinity and these things. 
tell me about someone else so that I can go and learn from him. He said, my son, I don't know anyone else on earth who is following the true religion of Jesus other than you and me. I don't know anyone else. But the time of the new prophet, that Jesus told us about the time of the new prophet. It is the time. So go to that city, which has a lot of palm trees, and wait for the prophet there. And then after he died, Salman Ali he buried him, and he traveled to Al Madina. He traveled to Al Madina because that place, Al Madina where Muhammad وسلم, started the Muslim state, it was described in the Torah and in the Injil. So what, the, the, not only the prophet himself, the prophet himself was described in the Injil and in the Torah and the place where he will come, it was also described. And this is how Salman عنه, he knew that place. Because he could go to any other place on earth. But why did he come exactly to this place? Because it was mentioned in the gospel. Now it is not there because they deleted many things. But the proof that it was there is that Salman radiallahu anhu, he came to the right place. So he knew this information from somewhere that the prophet will come in this place. And he came and we told before about his story he had a lot of tragedy because he in in, in his way uh, to al madina uh, he was not arab he is a he's a parisian and he saw some arabs some arab tribes he said do you know that place to that city had a lot of palm trees in this place they said yes yes we are going there he said can you take me with you he said yes you are welcome come with us and then when, 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 when he came with them before the, the, the arrived, they tightened him. He said, what you are doing? He said, they said, now you are our slave. We will sell you as a slave. He said, I trusted you. You told, told me that you will help me. They said, we said, we will take you there. And now we took you there. Now we have to get some benefit. We will sell you and we get some money. And they sold him to a Jew as a slave. And he started working for him as a slave for some time. But he said, at least, Alhamdulillah, that I reached to that place. And then he heard that the Prophet is coming. And he was very happy that the Prophet is coming. And when Nabi وسلم, came to the masjid, then Salman عنه, he, he came to, to look at him, to see his face. Because the way that he's looking is described in Al-Injil. And uh, he saw his face many times. And he saw the way he's talking. And the way he's, uh, he's dealing with people. And he understood that this is the man that is described in the gospel. And then he came and asked the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to accept him as a Muslim. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam accepted him. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you are a slave, we have to free you. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told his owner, his master, the Jew, how much he wants uh, to, uh, uh, to, to free Salman. Then when that Jew knew that Salman is becoming a Muslim, he wanted to make it difficult to make it impossible. He said, I have a piece of land. And this land, you cannot plant anything in it. There are some pieces of land you cannot plant anything. Do not accept. I want 100 palm trees in this land. If you can do this, I will give him to you. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, we will do this. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, bring the small, you know, when you, when you plant a palm tree, you, you, give, you, you bring a very small part of it that's called fasila, and you put it, then it will grow. And he said to the Sahaba, bring 100 fasilas, 
and to plant there. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, the land is, is uh, you cannot plant anything. He said, Allah will make it grow. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to take each one of these fasilas by his own hand and say Bismillah and put it. And Bismillah and put the other one. And he planted 99. And Salman, Radiallahu Anhu himself, he planted one. So they were 100. The 99 that were planted by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they started to grow. The one that Salman, Radiallahu Anhu, planted, it died. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam planted another one. So the Jew, the Jewish man, he saw that they are all growing. And he was very happy because he did not have any hope that this land will, uh, will have any palm trees in it. And he gave Salman عنه, to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this man, Salman al farisi the Parisian, عنه, he was one of those that the Nabi Sallallahu Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, he will get double reward. He will get double reward. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha wa aminu bi rasulih, yu'tikum kiflayni min rahmatih. Kiflayni min rahmatih. Some of you will get double reward. Wa yaj'al lakum nooran tamshuna bih. And you will get a light to walk with this light. And this is the light of guidance. The light of guidance. When you, when you are a true believer, you will have this light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will see things as they are. You will see things as they are. The important things you will see as important. The non-important things, the small things, you will see as small. And this is how you see the difference between a believer and a disbeliever. When there is, I'll mention a few examples. When there is some football match, like World Cup, and people are, for example, if if if, if Norway is playing playing against Brazil in in the World Cup, in the finals, so you will see at the time of the match, everyone is watching TV, everyone, and then the time of Salah comes, and then people who are even Muslims, but they have a bit weak Iman, will say, okay, we will wait until the match finish and then we will pray. Because it's a very important match. But if you have a true belief, then what will there be the difference if I see it now or I see the recording? Will this change anything? No. But if I miss the Salah time, I will not get the same reward. So I will go and pray because they see, the, this person sees the things with its true size. This is from dunya. What will happen if Norway uh, uh, won or Norway lost? What will happen? It's a game. It's nothing but a game. So this is the light. This is the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When someone, uh, a situation that is even more difficult, because this, this can be difficult for some people. But a situation that can be real difficult. A person who had a big problem in his job. Some of his colleagues or her colleagues, they made uh, planning against and they made problems. And this person is now, uh, may, may lose his position or lose his job. In a very difficult situation. Then if this person is not a true believer, this person will be in a depression, frustration. And maybe in a very difficult, cannot, uh, difficult uh, situation and cannot eat, cannot drink, cannot sleep. Why? Because it's a very big problem. But when that person is a true believer and has the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart, you will know that no harm can happen to me unless Allah decides. If all people stand against me, no one can give me any harm unless Allah decides. 
And if Allah decides, then I accept because Allah will, is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can test me with some hardship now, but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me a better thing later. So even if he loses the job, he has some trust. Ya Allah, I know that you are testing me and I'll be patient. And I will pass the test and I will wait for your mercy because he has the light. The light. So this is and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a light so that you can walk with this light. Your vision of the world is different from the vision of other people because you have the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this dunya, all of this life in your eyes is small. Small because you know that your hope is not here. You know that you are here for there. What is there? The afterlife. Al-Akhirah. Jannah. Paradise. This is your target. Because there, there is no sickness. There is no weakness. There is no sadness. There is no hardship. There is no worries. You will not get all. You will get all what you want. But this is the life where there is sickness. There is sadness. There is disappointment. There are worries. There are people that you love and they will go away and leave you. There are some people that you trust and they betray you. This is only in this life. So your target is, is bigger than this life. So whatever happened to you in this life, you know that this all life will end. This is the light. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a light to walk with this light. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sins. So, so what is the, the condition? Ya amanu taqullah. Fear Allah. Always watch your deeds. Wa aminu bi rasuli And believe in his messenger. Obey Allah and the messenger. Yu'tikum kiflayni min rahmatih. You will get double, you will be double rewarded. And you will get the light. And you will get the forgiveness. Wa yaghfir lakum. Wallahu ghafuru rahim and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgive, forgiving. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number 29, Bi Alla Ya'lam Ahlul Kitabi, Alla Yaqudiruna ala shayin min fadlillah, wa anna al fadla biyadillah, yu'tihi man yasha uallahu dul fadl azim. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling this to everyone, so that the people of the book the people of the book, uh, the Jews and Christians, because they say that we are the children of God. We are God's children. So some of them, they say, we decide who will be forgiven or not. Some priests, many Catholic priests, they can give some of their followers a piece of paper. This is certificate of Forgiveness. I don't know exactly what, what they call it, but this is what it is. A written piece of paper stamped from the Pope or the priest. Priest. It's, it's called in Arabic, Sak al mawfira Certificate of forgiveness. That you get this piece of paper, you are forgiven. So they think that they can decide who is forgiven and who is not. And many of them, they earn a lot of money. They make a lot of money for giving people the certificate of forgiveness. You go to the priest, you make a, a confession, and you, you tell this person about all of your sins, and then you pay for a certificate of forgiveness. Now you are released, you are forgiven. And mostly Catholic Christians, they do this because Protestants, mainly they don't need that because they believe that no Christian will be punished. But the Catholics, they believe that the Christians can be punished for some of their sins, which is a bit more realistic. But their popes and their, 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 their uh, priests and uh, bishops, they have this. Uh, and this is for both Christians and Orthodox. 
Christians and Orthodox, mainly the Coptic Church and other Orthodox churches, they have this certificate of forgiveness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling so that the people of the book, they should know that they have no authority. They have no authority to grant anything from uh, the forgiveness and the goodness of Allah. All the good things are granted by Allah only, not by you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who decides who is forgiven and who is not. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is the most generous and the most merciful and the one with all of the good things. So whoever wants to confess, to make a confession, do it to Allah. You don't need to talk to anyone. You don't need to tell anyone about your sins. Maybe you can ask someone, is this thing a sin or not? If I did this thing, how can I get forgiven? How can I Allah can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me? But if you have done some sins and you want to confess to someone, you want to tell someone about how bad you have been, you don't need to tell this to any human. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see you in all of your times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can hear you in all of your times. One man came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once and he said, Ya Rasulallah, is Allah subhanahu, if I want to talk to Allah, is he uh, close so that I can talk to him in a low voice? Or is he far so that I have to shout so that he can hear me? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, revealed this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ When my worshippers ask you about me, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I'm close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ when they pray to me, when they ask me, I will accept their prayers and I will answer their requests. So they just accept my calls. Well, you mean be, and they just believe in me. So that they, 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 uh, uh, they are in the right path and they uh, get the benefits of believing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can hear you, can see you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when you, whether your voice is loud or whether your voice is low, just talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the closest, the closest uh, condition you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are praying and you are making sujood. So make a lot of dua in the sujood because this is the position you are the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you don't need that anyone else hears you other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no one has the authority to forgive and no one has the authority to uh, tell you that you are punished. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this right, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that knows what is in your heart and knows all your uh, defects and all your sins. You can be a very good person in the eyes of people, and you can be very bad, actually. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your truth. So he is the one that you should talk to. He is the one that you should ask for forgiveness. And this is uh, the end of Surah Al-Hadid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this from us and let us practice what we have learned. Any questions?
is a question here. Can you make dua? Not in the fard, but in the sunnah. No, you can make dua in every sujood, even in the fard. But if someone is praying as imam, leading the salah, should not make very long sujood because people are following him. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when you pray as imam, and there are people praying behind you, don't pray too long because people can be sick. Some of them can be old. Some of them can be in a hurry. So don't let, don't make your salah very long to make it difficult for people. But when you are praying alone, you pray as long as you want. نحمد دعاء إن شاء الله يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين صل على محمد في الآخرين وصل على محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين اللهم قسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا منتهى أملنا ولا تسلط علينا من لا يرحمنا اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين واكشف الهم والغم والكرب عنا وعن المسلمين اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وأغننا بفضلك عمن سواك ولا تحوجنا ولا تذلنا إلا إليك ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رأوف الرحيم ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت لهاب وصل اللهم على محمد وآله وصحابته وتابعه بخير وأحسان إلى يوم الدين